Alright guys, Sajka over here back again today. Today is Friday, Christmas of course is fast approaching if you guys celebrate it. So the last couple of days have been pretty busy for me out in the evenings and stuff, Christmas related shenanigans. Today I'm back though, I want to discuss a couple of things that have happened over the last couple of days and I'll do the same again tomorrow because quite a lot has happened. There's some stuff to talk about here, patch updates. The main topic of today's video though is going to be this merchandise hijacking as I've described it in the title by Activision Blizzard going forward into the next season and the fact that the main CDLT will not be able to sell merchandise on their own stores going forward. All of that is going to be sorted through the league itself. And we'll talk about exactly some of the implications of that in the coming minutes. So like if you guys enjoy, subscribe if you're new as always. Very close now to 2020, which is really crazy to think about. But, um, you know, if we do make it there, which uh, if the world doesn't end and uh, I still make a video every day and I'll maybe I'll do a Christmas video or something with a Santa hat. I won't make it on um, on Christmas Day. I'll make it in, in advance. But you never know. You guys might finish Christmas dinner. You'll sit on the sofa you're like cool oh, I'm feeling a bit full um maybe I'll, I'll make a video for you guys to watch because I just want to get to the end of the year 365 videos 365 days um that would be fantastic so let's crack on with it here like if you guys enjoy maybe I already said that but the YouTube algorithm appreciates it and helps push out my videos to a new audience which is great to see all around so Charlie Intel patch update 1.12 is now live new map so season one continues we got crash in the game a couple of weeks back now we have the uh, the shipment map is in the game we'll talk about that a little bit in a second and vacant is also in the game so a few things have happened these are the patch notes, so Shipment, Vacant, Winter Doctors in the game, Vacant and Shipment 24-7, Cranked, which I believe is the mode that they're bringing back from Call of Duty Ghosts, where once you get a kill, you have to keep getting a kill every 30 seconds in order to not explode, um, which is a pretty cool game mode, um, pretty cool idea at least, in terms of uh, anti-camping, I guess. Some CDL-specific changes then reduce the lethality of non-car explosives, so um, yeah, it seems pretty interesting. I'm not sure exactly what they're going for here. I guess they don't mean nades by this, maybe they mean like barrels and stuff that can explode um, that aren't vehicles, so maybe that makes sense. Adjustments to spawns for Hardpoint. Now, this is something you love to see in theory. Has it worked in practice? Well, um, there are some questions that we'll look at in a couple of minutes here. So, Search and Destroy fixed a bug where the defending team could see the bomb carrier objective icon. This is a pretty damn big one. Um, whenever the bomb carrier was shooting on the minimap, you could just see that that was the bomb carrier, which is not something you want to have in the game. Hasn't been in the game for past, clearly not intended. With the uh, weapon pings on minimap option enable the bomb carrier would not show as a red dot on the minimap when shooting their weapon this has been fixed um so yeah there you go some more fixes in that regard and some codcaster um improvements as well implemented support for domination just in time for domination to hopefully be removed from the game entirely i'm just kidding i don't know whether domination or ctf would be better we talked about that a few videos back here are some other updates then. Supposedly, they reduced the uh, the audible range of footsteps, which is a pretty big damn thing for competitive. Um, increased occlusion and some other audio fixes as well. Weapon fixes of the 375 or 357 snake shot. Not really anything particularly related to competitive here. Um, so, and, you know, the rest of the stuff is irrelevant. But, you know, competitive, looking at these patch notes, you're thinking, look, not much has changed, but spawn changes, you know, let's go. Um, this is definitely a step in the right direction. But I just wanted to share this with you guys because I got added in this tweet the other day from Poozy and uh, I'll just put it on screen for you guys. This is some of the most mind-blowing stuff I've ever seen. So shipment is a difficult map to break, surely. You just bring it back as it was in the past. Yes, there's always been spawn trapping things on this map. It's just the nature of the map, right? It's crazy small. But they've changed, as far as I'm aware, and it looks right now, the way some of the barrels and the um, the crates are organized on the map, which means that spawn killing seems to be way easier than usual. Like, it was very rare, even on the old shipment, that you would actually see someone physically spawn. Um, they may well spawn just around the corner of a wall that you can spam through as they spawn in, but never has it been this bad, uh, what you're seeing on screen right here. So pretty outrageous stuff, um, as expected, I guess. But if they can't get the spawns right um, on a map which has been in the game for however many years, just copy and paste, um, you know, then what hope do we have on, on the rest of things? 
So, and Jacob then goes on to say the following, Spawn logic and footsteps feel the exact same, which is something we've heard in the past, right? Exclusive Ace always does the breakdown videos. I've watched a lot of them over the course of Modern Warfare when they were doing a lot of the footstep adjustments early on. And uh, they were like, oh yeah, reduced footstep audio made it more difficult to hear. Exclusive Ace would do the video, I'd put my headsets on to listen to the comparison, and I'd be like, I barely hear any difference. Um, and, you know, that's what Jcap's opinion seems to be here as well. Spawn logic and footsteps feel the exact same, so, you know, this is not what you want to see, especially given they've made the attempt, but hopefully in future, um, you know, this is a, a step in the right direction. One thing that's quite interesting is there's supposedly been some stealth nerfs to some, um, to some things that aren't being announced in the patch notes, I suppose, just to avoid community backlash. The problem is with that is that when people actually do find out about it, that there have been some nerfs, then uh, now we're talking about even heavier community backlash for not being open and transparent. So the skeleton stock apparently has been um, nerfed as well. So, um, you know, it apparently it normally helped wig weapons by boosting their mobility to an insane degree. So Exclusive Ace did a video saying this has been nerfed. And there's some other things that apparently have been stealth nerfed as well, which really you don't like to see. It, it's better to have the transparency. There has been some rumors that the MP5 received a movement speed nerf. Exclusive Ace has tested this and it doesn't seem to be the case. So if you guys have heard rumors about that, um, supposedly that is not true. Exclusive Ace is a very, very trustworthy source indeed within the Call of Duty community. Community. Thought this was funny as well from Octane. Um, let's just play the video on screen because it's not very good here on the Twitter quality. But just related to the spawns we've just been talking about, um, not exactly what you want to see. So yeah, what do you guys think about the potential of this going forward, right? We've had some updates to the game and um, things have been changing and have been, I guess, slowly improving over time. I talked about on the Spitfire podcast a couple of weeks ago that yes, things are changing somewhat slightly for the better over time. The game is in a better state now than it was when the game came out, I would say, um, but it's still not a very quick movement in the right direction. There's a lot of issues that we would like to have resolved, if possible, before the season begins. And the season is beginning in about a month from now. Um, I guess it is the Christmas period, but in the new year, we need to be starting to see some changes thick and fast to get this game to a competitive ready state. And we'll talk about that more in tomorrow's video. So here we go. This is the main topic for today. Chicago Huntsman say the following. And Hector is very open and transparent, as he very usually is. And uh, the Dallas Empire and other individuals have been saying similar things about their own merchandise. So... Of course, the Chicago Huntsmen have their own store. These are the kind of things they're selling. You can get a Huntsman flag that you can bring along to the main event. You get the beanie hat or whatever's going on here. This uh, thing that you put on the back of your phone, I think, to, so you can hold it, which is a pretty cool little device. I don't have one of them myself. It's a sticker, you know? So you've got plenty of options. Um, but, uh, and of course, you've got this in addition to hoodies and all of this stuff. But this is stuff that, you know, you don't see every day. You don't see every single brand coming out with stuff like this. So clearly, Hector knows what's going on. But uh, as the Huntsman make very clear here, this is the last Chicago Huntsman drop that just went up and other organizations are saying the same thing around the scenes right now. Dallas Empire just did a tweet effectively saying the last drop is now live, you know, go and get the stuff while you can. And uh, just to explain this, I will introduce Hector Hector Rodriguez. All right, so big news and sad news. The Huntsman store is going to be coming down at the end of the year. What that means is that every single item there is no longer going to be available for you to purchase. So all of the Huntsman stuff that's available now is super, super limited. Uh, the league will take over come January 1st. So at the end of this year, there will no longer be a possibility for you to get stuff that we created on our own. Everything else is just gonna be uniform stuff that will be sold by the league. Uh, same hats as everybody else, just all put together. So as Crone at CDL Intel here makes clear, on January the 1st, teams will no longer be dropping merchandise personally created by themselves. The league will take charge of it all in the new year. You have two weeks and um, yeah, slightly less than that from today to get all the stuff that uh, you need to have. So some interesting replies to this one, and it's it's a very intriguing um, conversation that a lot of people are having here. Um, but, you know, the, the importance and the fact that Activision are going down this route. So what does this mean for for the league as a whole and the merchandise we're going to be seeing, it's going to be Activision endorsed, which means that I guess Activision are doing most of the design work. Um, I mean, these logos have been approved through Activision anyway. These logos are probably Activision property to some degree, or at least they have the trademark and the rights for them, um, given that it is their league, Activision Blizzard's league. So it makes sense that they can do what they like.
like with it. At the same time, it's an interesting decision. Um, it takes the options out of the hands of a lot of the actual organizations to make their own merchandise, to design new things, and probably there will be a very, not necessarily bland, but a very standard set of things across the season, right? I kind of like the idea that the Chicago Huntsman might come out and make something like this to put on the back of your phone, and another organization that isn't quite as in tune with their modern day fans might not come out with something like that. However, I imagine Activision making the decisions here, they're going to pick the, the jerseys, the hoodies, the t-shirts, the flags maybe, and some other ideas, and they'll probably be just standardized across the board, and it just looks the same, but you change up the logo. That's probably how it's going to look, the logo and the color scheme and all of that stuff. When an organization can make it for themselves, they can put their own spin on it and make it seem more home-like. And um, I think maybe you might lose that a little bit with Activision doing it. At the same time, it's not great for the organizations, right? This means that Activision is surely going to be taking a cut. I'm not sure if they already take a cut of the merchandise being sold by the Huntsman and other organizations, given that um, if they do hold the trademark and, and whatever to the logos. But if they are being sold to Activision, then the organizations will still take a cut for that. But Activision definitely are going to be pocketing a fair bit of change off selling the merchandise and that's the only way you're going to be able to do it going forward so on the whole I don't think it's good for the consumer because it means you're going to have less individuals trying to compete and innovate to make the best um, you know logos you can shop.nrg.gg you're not going to be able to buy any CDL related stuff on there within a couple of weeks so you know, again, interesting decisions with Activision, um, I guess overall expected, but it's probably not good for the consumer, and uh, I can't really see how it's good for the organizations either, I guess, as I say, it does put the ball in Activision's core rather than the organization's core, um, but, you know, it's something you would like to have control of, surely, is your merchandise and the way you're advertising your brand. Activision can kind of do whatever they want with the merch, and, um, you know, that's your only option, right, if you're a Huntsman fan, is in the new year to buy stuff through the official CDL website and whatever that they design and come up with compared to buying it right now um, with the Chicago themselves and feel like you're actually genuinely supporting the organization rather than the league within it. So, you know, interesting questions, but uh, these are things we see all the time and we've talked about a long time and that's just the way Activision Blizzard operate, I guess. A couple of things before we finish then related to the casters in the league. Chris Tunn has just got married, so congratulations to him. This is pretty incredible scenes. Um, you know, Chris Tunn, a very well-known caster, has been around the Call of Duty scene for a very, very long time. So, yeah, big congratulations to him. Disappointed to see that he didn't film an episode of Spitfire live from the wedding, which would have been fun. And Dirk, king of Bravo stream. You guys may know he's gone over to the NBA 2K to do some casting and stuff there. And he's you know, pretty damn good at the game, it seems teams and has entered to actually compete in the league and he's made it to the last 175 players for identification to be selected into the draft next season so again congratulations if he makes it all the way that would be phenomenal for um, you know just to see some call of duty talent making it big so yeah hope you guys enjoyed the video like if you did subscribe if you're new as always i would greatly appreciate it thanks for watching as always i will see you next time